Hello everyone. Today we'll discuss must know images of esophagus in radiology for all radiology trainees, especially preparing for the core exam. My name is Sunil Lakshman Jeff. So the first case shows a double contrast esophagram showing an outpouching uh, in the lower esophagus. There is actually, this is actually upward herniation of the stomach into the chest, the superior migration of the GE junction. This is compatible with type one hiatal hernia. It's also called a sliding hiatal hernia because the GE junction has slided up, upwards and it accounts, it's the most common hernia, accounts for it more than 85% of all hiatal hernias and it is associated with diffuse thick thinning or diffuse weakening of the phrenoesophageal membrane which is supposed to be responsible for fixing the distal esophagus near the hiatus of the diaphragm. This laxity of the phrenoesophageal membrane allows the upward displacement of gastroesophageal junction and stomach into the chest through the diaphragmatic hiatus. Patients with type 1 hiatal hernia can also have reduced lower esophageal sphincter tone and therefore can often present with gastroesophageal reflux. Esophagram double contrast showing lower es esophagus down here. This is the diaphragm right here and this is the stomach right here. So as you can see, the GE junction is at the level of diaphragm. However, there's a gastric, the gastric fundus is seen projecting upwards into the chest cavity. So this is consistent with paraesophageal hernia. This is type two hiatal hernia and the GE junction position does not change. Instead, the fundus rolls over next to the GE junction into the lower chest cavity. Type three hiatal hernia is a combination of type one and type two. This is massive type four hiatal hernia. As you can see, there's a large stomach projecting and herniated through the diaphragm. So this is the diaphragmatic lining on both sides and the stomach is entirely into the chest cavity. So this is type four hiatal hernia. Which of the following types of hiatal hernia is most common and is associated with Phrenoesophageal membrane weakness. The answer is type one sliding hiatal hernia. This case shows double contrast esophagram on the left here and single contrast esophagram on the right. There are these small focal outpouching of contrast on both sides of the esophageal lumen. Some of these have a very well defined flask shaped appearance. These are essentially dilated mucous glands and are found in association with esophagitis. And uh, the diagnosis is esophageal intramural pseudodiverticulosis. Candida can sometimes grow if you take out the culture from these dilated glands. And this the candida infection is supposed to be the secondary infection and not cause of this esophageal uh, pseudodiverticulosis. This double contrast esophagus esophagram shows these horizontal fine lines, uniform transverse fold, which are seen. And these are consistent with feline esophagus. This finding is caused by contraction of the longitudinal muscles of the esophagus, which results in these transverse fold, which are transient. This is also called as esophageal shiver. And it's a transient finding. It's often seen secondary to gastroesophageal reflux. Double contrast, barium esophagram shows dilated mid 
lower esophagus with tapering at the level of G junction forming a beak and this finding is consistent with achalasia. The mechanism of this abnormality is lack of relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter which results in dilatation of the proximal mid and lower esophagus. Now why does why is there lack of relaxation of lower esophageal sphincter? Because of destruction of the mitre ganglia, the or back plexus, that's an inhibitory in neurons that promote lower esophageal relaxation. If there is loss of that plexus, as is seen in achalasia, this fails to relax and there is dilatation of the proximal uh, mid lower esophagus. Jugas disease uh, can also cause similar appearance and it is caused by organism called Triponosoma cruzi. What it does is the infection again causes the destruction of this myentric plexus which is responsible for relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. The Chagas disease bug is transmitted by Rudovid or kissing bug. Double contrast esophagram shows outpouching of the at the lower esophagus level immediately above the diaphragm. The diagnosis is epiphrenic diverticulum and this is a kind of a pulgin diverticulum that means there is increased pressure within the lumen which causes uh, protrusion of mucosa and submucosa outside into the lower chest. This is a pseudo diverticulum. That means all the layers of the wall of the esophagus are not part of or the covering of this hernia, herniated sac. And it is most commonly associated with motility disorders such as achalasia because of the lack of narrowing of the lower esophagus and constant contraction from the upper esophagus, there is increased pressure built up, which causes this pulgin diverticulum formation. And uh, these patients rarely have esophageal uh, reflux because esophageal reflux is secondary to the relaxation of the lower esophagus sphincter. And that is a problem. The lower esophageal sphincter is not relaxing. That is causing this uh, pulgin diverticulum formation because of the local mass effect from this diverticulum, there is local mass effect on the esophagus, so they can result in dysphagia uh, in these patients. Double contrast esophagram here shows lining of the esophagus. Parts of the esophagus are normal, but there are these additional multiple areas of mid and lower esophagus. Shaggy appearance with multiple small filling defects and small ulcers. So ulcer is base, uh, appears on a barium esophagram as filled with contrast, while plaques and polyps appear as filling defect within the lumen on the esophagram exam. This is typical appearance of candida esophagitis, and it is most common type of infectious esophagitis, and it most commonly appears in immunosuppressed patients. The typical appearance is described as shaggy appearance uh, of the mucosa. So in the prior exam, we saw small tiny ulcers. In this example here, we have this large, shallow, diamond-shaped ulcer. For reference, you can see there are these vertebral bodies approximately in an adult. Vertebral body height is 2.5 centimeters. So this is fairly large ulcer spanning two vertebral bodies. The surrounding mucosa is normal. So this finding is consistent with CMV esophagitis. Sometimes they will give you a history of patient being uh, suffering from HIV infection. That too very poorly controlled HIV infection. The treatment for CMV esophagitis is gancyclovir because of the high toxicity of gancyclovir, biopsy needs to be confirmed by brushing 
uh, the diagnosis needs to be confirmed by brushing or biopsy of this ulcer before administrating gancyclovir treatment. Esophagram shows line contrast of pacifying the esophagus and there is this contrast that is extending into the left chest cavity. Looks like it has a regular appearance and it is scattered irregularly. Looks like the contrast is outside the lumen. So this is this diagnosis is consistent with Borav syndrome that is spontaneous esophageal perforation. The most common site for the perforation is left side posterior lateral wall of the distal esophagus. And it is usually caused by forceful ejection of gastric contents from the unrelaxed esophagus against the closed glottis. So the patient is vomiting and the glottis is closed. This causes increased pressure in the lower esophagus and that can lead to perforation. Sometimes additional findings such as pneumomediastinum, pneumothorax and pleural effusion is also noted. Esophagram has a role in detecting the location of the contrast leak. Cross-sectional image here showing at the level of the lower esophagus, this is heart anteriorly, vertebral bodies, iota here, that's IVC going into the heart. This is esophagus and there are these multiple dilated uh, vessels at the level of lower esophagus consistent with varices. These varices sometimes can be prominent when the patient is laying down on an perium esophagram and they, they disappear when the patient stands up. So that can be uh, a, a way to distinguish them from a persistent filling defect in the esophagus. Double contrast esophagram shows contrast lining the esophageal, esophageal mucosa. If you compared from the surrounding structure, the esophagus is not dilated. It is uh, not normally dilated. It's actually uh, less distended. And there are these concentric rings of contraction in the mid to upper esophagus. This is typical appearance of eosinophilic esophagitis. Upper esophageal double contrast study shows small filling defect along the anterior aspect of the cervical esophagus. And this is a thin filling defect. This finding is consistent with an esophageal web. Esophageal web are, can be seen secondary to autoimmune mucocutaneous blistering diseases such as pemphigus. So the blisters that form in the esophagus, esophageal mucosa, once they heal, they can scar and develop this web appearance. Other causes of mucosal inflammatory diseases such as Steven Johnson syndrome can also result in web formation. This upper esophageal double contrast esophagram shows a prominent filling defect in the posterior cervical esophagus at the level of C5, C6 vertebral bodies. And this is consistent with prominent cricopharyngeus muscle, also known as cricopharyngeal bar. The cricopharyngeal muscle is usually usually relaxes when the patient swallows. So in this particular case, you see the bolus has gone past and the cricopharyngeal muscle has not relaxed as it should usually relax. That is diagnostic for prominent cricopharyngeal muscle or cricopharyngeal bar. It is considered uh, to be secondary or related to gastroesophageal reflux disease. The mechanism is when the patient has gastroesophageal reflux, Glycopharyngeal bar contraction prevents the gastric contents from crossing the upper esophagus and in 
potentially going into the airway. So cricopharyngeal muscle contracts to protect the airways. When the patient has uncontrolled gastroesophageal reflux, consistent repeated contraction of the cricopharyngeal muscle results in its hypertrophy and can present as a cricopharyngeal bar. So there's this double contrast esophagram showing outpouching of the lower posterior esophagus. This is typical appearance of zincar diverticulum. Just like epiphrenic diverticulum, zincar diverticulum is also a pulgian diverticulum. That means there is this is an this is a pseudo diverticulum, and the wall of the diverticulum are not made up of the wall of the esophagus. The cause for this is increased pressure within the esophageal lumen. It's commonly associated with cricopharyngeal bar. So when the cricopharyngeal muscle try, is trying hard to prevent reflux of content from the esophagus into the airways, there's increased pressure, which can result in uh, outpouching here in the lower esophagus, particularly uh, through Achillean dehiscence, that is a posterior defect between the horizontal and oblique fibers of inferior constrictor muscle in the region of cricopharyngeal muscle. The diverticulum extends inferiorly below the level of the cricopharyngeal muscle and posteriorly. And when the diverticulum is small, it is in midline. As it goes bigger, it lateralizes over time. This is again is associated with gastroesophageal reflux. Other symptoms which the patient may report is halitosis uh, and regurgitation of undigested food hours after the patient has consumed food. That is because of the food being lodged here and getting decomposed in this diverticulum can lead to halitosis and uh, this can sometimes decompress and the patient can regurgitate and the food can be tasted again hours after the ingestion. Zanker's diverticulum. Thank you so much.